God is a big problem. And uh, I think there are a lot of people in this world which I call theophobic. You know, I think I was one of those people growing up. And I think that's why the Kabbalah has been so important to me, because it helped me get over and really kind of get rid of this bad image of God who is out to get me, this acute comic strip of Calvin and Hobbes, <laughs> where Hobbes turns to Calvin and says, Calvin, do you believe in God? And Calvin's got his hand behind his head thinking, he says, well, somebody's out to get me. <laughs> you know? And I think this is, this is really, if anything, that's what the Kabbalah will do for the world. It will get rid of this, um, this childish, abusive image of God and enlighten us to uh, an understanding of God, which is um, not just more personal, but more empowering. Well, what the Kabbalah reveals is that the teachings of Judaism did not come to disempower man at all, just the opposite. It came to empower us with an incredible sense of meaning and purpose that you and I are literally expressions and aspects of this one self. Then you've just tapped into the infinite source of everything and everyone. So it's just the opposite of what most people identify religion with, is that it's about disempowering us, when actually what the Kabbalah reveals is how one realizes their connection to the one self, or the Kabbalah refers to as the Ein Sof, the boundless one, and how the boundless one seeks to become expressed in the realm of bounds through you and me. I've heard so many people say when they decide or describe God is that this, this being up there watching what they're doing. So first of all, they say, why would God even be interested in my life, number one? Yes. And number two, God is just like waiting for me to do something bad so yes. I can be punished. Exactly. That's why exactly what my whole life is to help people get over. Because that's not only messing them up, but it's just downright wrong. That is not what um, our tradition teaches and the Kabbalah clarifies that. You know, without, without the, the Kabbalistic uh, teachings, I think people very easily misunderstand what the Bible is saying. People quote the Torah, the Bible, and it's, they say, God seems so mean, and he's out for retribution, and that's what people read. And, and sometimes I like to say, well, you can't just read those words on a literal level, because it goes so much deeper than that. Right. But if people don't know what that deeper meaning is, how are they supposed to know that it's really deeper than that, and it doesn't mean what it actually says it says. One of the greatest uh, problems in the world today is people are left to their own interpretations and they're not giving guidance on how do you pick up this, you know, book and understand its soul message to not only me, but to the world. Right. Most people think that when we talk about God as one, they think there's this one guy in the sky, and he... He has the sole rights of being God, and we are not God, right? That's not really what we're talking about when we say that God is one. When we say God is one, we say, we mean there's nothing but God. There is just this one self, okay? Now, if we truly believe that, then what would we do to ourselves? If I knew that you and I are part of one self, when I speak nastily towards you, no. when I hurt you, the Talmud says that if the right hand accidentally cut the left hand, would the left hand then take retribution and cut the right hand? That's ridiculous, okay? Right. Right. So the Kabbalah's essential point is to delineate the meaning of the oneness of God and how all the details unfold from this oneness and continues to exist within this oneness. And there's just one, okay? And that's, that's what the, the Kabbalists say. That's what the whole theme of the Kabbalah is, is to give us the details of the vast network that is interconnected and all wrapped into this one self, this one consciousness, this one soul. Mm -hmm. And you and I and everybody, everybody, is in some way an expression, a facet, a limb, so to speak, of the body of the king. Mm -hmm. And so it would, answer, and it would answer every question in the world, right? Why is there so much war, right? Because my God is right, your God is wrong. So the fact that we're different is what makes us supportive of each other, okay? But it doesn't. And because part of it, well, because we don't have this consciousness. In other words, the Kabbalah consciousness is helping us understand 
that even opposites are two sides of one self, two sides of one coin. And therefore, all this, you know, Rabbi Cook, who was a great Kabbalist, explains that all the personal problems and all the international problems are rooted in the mis misconception about God. And that if we could clarify the true meaning of God, we would have the key to everything in our lives. Okay, well, let's say you're a self secular person and you're listening to this. And they say, okay, I kind of get what he's talking about. What are they supposed to do? The Kabbalah is teaching you, right? But the teaching is to direct you to a knowledge that's inside of yourself. Uh -huh. You know God already. You know the one self already. You know, for instance, I'll give you a, a kind of silly example. These like, what do they call them? These flash mobs, you know, those big these days. Yeah. You know, how suddenly in the middle of the subway, this one guy starts to dance, and then three guys start to dance, and then a, a, a 200 people are dancing in perfect synchronicity. Yeah. Why is that so attractive to us? Because we sense that we're actually part of one soul. And that just as my fingers are working in perfect coordination because they're all connected to one soul, what's attractive about these flash mobs, or what's attractive about music in general, is that perfect synchronicity, that they're not separate individuals, but somehow this greater spirit is dancing through them, right? We know God. We all want God. You cannot but yearn God. But if you think God is some guy in the sky over there, a lot of people don't want that guy. But when you realize that God is the one self that we are all part of, and we are limbs of that one self, like my fingers are limbs of this hand, mm -hmm. and we can live a lifestyle that communicates and, is, and, and, and successfully uh, affirms that truth, then we got the key to everything. That's it. Right? So the interesting thing about the Kabbalah is that it's helping you understand what you already know. Right? <laughs> it's not going to teach you anything new. It's going to help you accent something ancient. That's actually what's called in the Kabbalah, Atik Yomin. The highest sphera, the highest divine power, is called the Ancient of Days. Right? Why is it called the Ancient of Days? Because actually what we're doing is we're getting in touch with a knowing that's ancient. Mm -hmm. you know, in fact, the Hebrew word for progress is lehit kadem. The Hebrew word for the past is kedem. So that doesn't make any sense, but it makes total sense. Lehit kedem means I am progressing towards the past. Right? All progress means I'm progressing towards a future where what will be revealed is what I knew all along inside me. Hmm. Right? And so what the Kabbalah does is it helps you get in touch with truths that you already know, right? Experientially, all right? Mm -hmm. So you've got a menu, but you see the problem with the menu a meal metaphor is that there's this menu and it's describing a meal and I might start to really salivate, wow, this sounds really delicious, and then I eat the menu, that's ridiculous. But I've never tasted that meal, so this menu did a good job of kind of getting my imagination what this must be, but then I gotta eat the meal. In this case, you're the meal. Right? The Kabbalah is the menu, and it's directing you to what you already know inside. Uh -huh. And that we are naturally seeking all the time. We are all seeking to become part of the one. There is one self, one universal consciousness, and each and every one of us, the soul is a part of God. You know, everybody wants to feel like they're someone. Right. Right? What does it mean to be a someone? Right? This world tells me I'm a no one, I'm nothing. We are one fifteenth of a billionth of a speck of dust. And even that's optimistic. You know, Dust in the Wind is a very optimistic song, because you're not even dust in the wind. <laughs> right. So why is it that everything from without tells me I'm nothing? What is inside me that tells me I'm something? I'm someone. Because you are someone. You are some of the one. And you know that. You and I and everything that we see right here are all expressions and aspects of that oneness. But we have fallen into a consciousness of separation, which the Kabbalah refers to as klipa. And klipa is a shell, and it's suggesting that you live in your bag of skin, and I live in my bag of skin, and there's separation. But that's not true. There's nothing that separates us except our misunderstandings. And the Kabbalah is there to help us overcome this misconception of this disconnect of the universe 
and realize how we are all various facets. We are all part of the color of the spectrum of this one light. In fact, Rabbi Cook actually uses that metaphor that there is one light and each and every one of us is a color of that one light. And the more we, uh, we awaken to this oneness, and the more we think, talk, and act under the influence that you and I and everyone else are part of this one self, the better this world will be, and the better each and every one of us will feel. I'm feeling better already. <laughs> Me too. <laughs>